Hey y'all. So I was just thinking about um that little kid book. Um I don't remember how many monkeys it was jumping on the bed or whatever. But y'all know how it go. Like five monkeys was jumping on the bed, one fell off and bumped his head. Then there was four little monkeys all the way down to one. Um, it's been so long since I even like heard the story or whatever. But just like that story how all the monkeys started falling off the bed one by one people are gonna fall out of your life one by one because everybody's not meant to be in your life long term lifelong forever forever does not exist forever is a is a disney fairy tale forever is a disney fairy tale because the only person who's going to forever be with you is god God is going to God was with you before you were put on this earth. God is with you while you're on this earth and God will be with you in the afterlife when you leave this earth. So that is the only person or entity creator of all things, the most high, you know, universe whatever you want to call it, the creator of everything, who will be with you. So to have this idea that things are forever you know no things here on planet earth are temporary temporary yeah you might be here you know 50 60 70 80 90 maybe if you real real lucky 100 years but you know what i'm saying that is is really really a fast lifetime when you go into a spiritual aspect a hundred years is very short very very short it seems like us to a long time but it's very short y'all very but y'all need to live y'all live you know there are a lot of mentally unstable emotionally unhinged people out here you know these are the same people that will try to get you to believe God's chosen people are poor. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I ain't trying to be poor. I ain't trying to be homeless outside. Now, things happen to people that cause them to be homeless, such as stupidity. You know what I'm saying? They made bad financial decisions they end up losing their home their car their job you know their freedom if they got uh you know um taken away on some fraud or a ponzi scheme type stuff they got a little too greedy and they got caught up y'all know ushers all caught up got me feeling it caught up i'm losing control <laughs> and it'd be so funny and not and not to say that I'd be laughing at people, not really laughing at them like ha ha ha. I take I, I I have joy in their misfortune or their happiness. No, I laugh at them as in like you've made these choices, and then now that you're reaping the consequences of these choices, um, you know, you mad, you know, all of a sudden Satan, you know, it's like. That ain't Satan's fault. Satan did not tell you to go do that stuff. Like, okay, so there's this one girl. I love listening to her uh her um read people say things to her. So the one that I was listening to yesterday, y'all, it was basically about this woman. She's a married woman with a, a, a little girl that's in Girl Scouts, right? Now mind you, this woman, you could tell based on the email or whatever. She took pleasure in being a cum dumpster for the fathers in the Boy Scouts. So let's say, for example, um, there's eight mothers in the Girl Scouts, eight fathers in the Boy Scouts. These are married couples, eight married couples, her and her husband, right? She would get close to the little girls so that she could fuck their daddy, right? So you didn't fuck all eight of these men and she up there. Oh, yeah, I take pleasure in stealing a married man. Sis, if you could steal them, 
they was never committed to the marriage, okay? They wasn't committed to the marriage to hit you, to, to glaze your yams, to slap them cheeks, okay? They was not committed to their wives like, you know, they, they took their vows like they should be, okay? So then you take it upon yourself to get mad because, you know, um, you got caught with one of the daddies. Word got around of the mothers of uh, Girl Scouts. So now you and your child are outcasts. This is what it means to uh, for the child to, um, what does it say? The children will suffer the sins of their mothers and their fathers. This little girl has to suffer for the sins of her mother. Her mother thought it was okay to be a cum dumpster to her fe fellow uh, Girl Scouts daddies. So now that the mothers are talking all, all about her, calling her a cum dumpster. Now, what do you think the, the little girls in the group? Your mommy's a whore. Your mommy's a slut. We don't like you because guilty by association. Okay. Now, this little girl is innocent. She's done nothing wrong, but her mother has made her an outcast amongst her little Girl Scout uh, peers and amongst the mothers because the woman had the audacity to say, it's not right. It's one thing if they talk about me, but don't talk about my child. You are the reason why they're talking about that child because that child is a reminder to you why all of the asses are getting divorced hell yo yo husband her husband left her when he found out that she was up there getting her cheeks slammed and yammed <laughs> baked and clammed he did the right thing by divorcing and leaving her so now your daughter is suffering she's suffering because her daddy's leaving the house you broke up the family and you're breaking up other families and you're destroying her childhood because now she's the daughter of a of a cum dumpster so this is what it means and, and, and then what kills me is in the end of the email the lady talked about some advice what should i do ma'am ma'am are you kidding me like and it's crazy how um i just seen a um a tiktok on on a youtube short where this lady she was a grown woman she had to be maybe she looked like she might have been maybe in her 40s possibly her 50s and she spoke and she was like you know uh when but when she was about six to nine years old her mother made the decision to be in a relationship with a married man and create three children with that married man. The mother is now deceased. And that grown woman said that she has been left with the responsibility of those three younger siblings. And she spoke on how the sins of, a, uh, of the parents affect the children. And that is very, very, very true. Because the daddy, the daddy, he ain't thinking about them kids. The dad's still alive. He is not taking care of them children. Dead be. Even though he has his own family and his own wife, I don't know if the wife knows about them. I, I would imagine she does. But, you know what I'm saying? What the heck? You know? All I can say is, if my narcissistic mom was to do either of these things, you know what I'm saying, make me a ridicule amongst my peers for her hoish behavior to, you know, break up my family because of her hoish behavior, I have every right as the child, the innocent victim to dislike you. To not want nothing to do with you. Because your mind is messed up. You got low self-esteem. No self-worth. No self-value. That you stoop that low. And you can't talk about you have morals. How do you have morals and values and standards? And you up here creeping with married men. Taking men. 
Huh? Hypocrites. That's what they are. They like to be seen as, oh, I'm just so holy and sanctified. I, I, I didn't know. Yeah, that's the lie that they'll tell the children. But let them children go to the fathers. And fathers ain't going to sugarcoat coat what the mama did. Your mama was my cum dumpster. <laughs> People, boy. I'm telling you. But I'm just saying, like, they really be doing stuff. And they think. Well, they don't think. That's the problem. They don't think. They're very impulsive. They think about in the moment right here right now what's going to satisfy me because that selfish behavior what's the point in being in a marriage or relationship if you're going to sit here and bring chaos and destruction upon your life your children's life you know you are a reflection upon your children upon and vice versa i mean you know what i'm saying it's a butterfly effect what you do affects your kids it really, truly does, you know, but the, the things that they had to say, it's like, what the, the, the Girl Scout story took me out. I was like, you really got the nerve to be asking for advice? Really? And I'm totally disgusted with this lady. She got to have a Jezebel spirit because who in their right mind in a marriage and they have morals values and standards and they have self-esteem self-confidence self-love self-care and respect not just for themselves but for their spouse and their kids or family who would go and do that man or woman something mentally wrong with you something is mentally wrong with the chicks in the world who 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 break up with a guy they are no longer the main and you demote yourself to side bitch because even though you broke up with this man you still sucking and fucking him you demoted yourself he didn't demote you you demoted and degraded yourself self-respect self-esteem self-love and self-care being loyal to yourself goes a long way ladies i don't understand this whole hookup culture nonsense y'all just think oh sex is just sex casual sex is just casual. okay when you catch them damn sex demons and they get to fucking your head up your emotions up and they start breaking you down and killing you spiritually was the sex worth it I'm willing to bet no. <laughs> some, of the, some of the stories out here in the world be like, this can't be real. They got to be making this up. They got to be lying. But no, that's not my reality. I hope that's not your reality. But apparently, it's somebody's reality based on their perception and their mindset of how the world works. You know, some people, you got to let them go. Like my mom, she has this mindset where she loves the man bash because that's what narcissistic women are. They are misogynistic. They are more misogynistic than a misogynistic man. OK, they hate women more than the misogynistic and gay men hate women. You know, they hate women so much because women are competition oh she's more prettier than me oh she's taller than me oh this oh that just in competition left and right about every little least thing oh you got more money than me oh everything's a competition but they can't compete where they don't compare they know that and that's also where insecurity is bred and is created but when people show you who they are through their character, stop being an enabler to their bad behavior. Birds of a feather flock together. I don't want to be friends with no chick that has downgraded and don't respect herself because she a side chick to a guy. 
I don't respect no woman who could sit there and make her husband look like a fool because you out here in the streets behind his back. I don't respect no woman because you go against my moral code. You can't be a so-called female associate or friend and tell me, yeah, I be cheating, I this, I that. Well, you're exposing your character when you say these things. And then you wonder why I don't call you back. You're blocked and deleted. You, you, you no, know, because we don't embody the same morals and standards. And you have to stand on your morals and standards. You cannot. You, you got to watch the company that you keep. And you got to watch the company that your company keeps. You, you hear me? You got to watch the company you keep. And you got to watch the company that they keep. Because sometimes... They be the ones talking to your enemies. Sometimes they be the one venting and putting your business and gossiping behind your back. That's why people don't like my silence nowadays. Oh, so what's going on? What's up with you? I share only nothing but the good news. And that's if I even want to do that. Because if I share one good thing and I gauge that individual's response, and they don't seem too happy. They say it with their mouth, but their tone of voice betrays what they're, the words they're saying. Or the, their facial expressions or body language betrays the words coming out their mouth. The energy just don't feel like you're being honest. I'm going to trust it. I'm like, oh, okay. I know not to tell you nothing. Or you share good news and they get quiet. They get dismissive. They try to just bypass it like, oh, okay. And then they start talking about themselves and stuff like that and all of that, like trying to one-up you type stuff. You got to watch people. It don't mean cut them off. It just means move in silence. It just means, oh, so what's going on with you? What's up with you? Not everybody that hits you up talking about, I'm just checking on you. It's checking on you. They're, remember, monitoring spirits exist. These people are just trying to monitor and gauge what's going on with you. Keep your money private. Keep your love life private. Because at the end of the day, if you take an L, who going to know if it's private, right? If things don't work out in your favor in that relationship, you took that L in private, right? Who going to know? Except for the very few people that you may have told. But other than that, when you tend to put things out there... There are people that are jealous, envious. They're actually, you know, um, they, they think ill thoughts towards you. They feel ill thoughts towards you. And even though they may not say it out their mouth, their thoughts and their feelings alone are pushed out into like the universe, right? And, you know, they're trying to like, bring chaos in your life you know what i'm saying they're they're trying they're they're praying on your downfall they're hoping and wishing bad on you even though they have not spoken it thoughts are powerful feelings when your thoughts are married to your feelings that shit is powerful it's a powerful manifestation and and, and people can manifest bad things just like they can manifest good things you know, your subconscious mind doesn't know the difference. It doesn't know the difference between something that's true or something that's false, which is why you should be get, be careful about the self-talk that you speak over yourself. You know, these people generally want to create doubt in your mind. You know, you got this business plan or, you know, you're you're thinking about going for that promotion or you're thinking about asking this guy or this girl out or whatever whatever it is for you. You're thinking about doing it. And then you say, hey, I'm thinking about doing this. And that person starts asking, well, are you sure? It's a spirit of doubt. Doubt is a demon. I didn't told y'all that. Don't be playing with these spirits out here. Test the spirit of every man. Trust not every spirit. Trust not every tongue. You better stay prayed up because this is not a time to be playing around. It's not a time. A double-minded individual is unstable in all their ways. 
There is no such thing as riding the fence. You are either for God or you for the ops. Plain and simple. You either a wheat or you a tear. Plain and simple. And the more and more that I just observe people, I actually see more tears than wheat. <laughs> you know? And it's just like, mm -mm. like, don't come over here. Don't talk to me. Mm -mm. I'm good. I'm good. Some people, you got to know when to let them go. You got to know when to cut them off. And don't feel guilty about it. If they pop back up later, that is your determination on whether or not you allow them back. Me, personally, if I cut a person off or I stop dealing with them, there is no coming back. Now, there are some people that you know they'll like you'll be separate for a time and then y'all cross paths down later on down in life that is possible but i'm talking about the people that you know you know in your spirit in your gut with all your mind and all your heart you know that they do not like you if you know this that they do not like you then you should know not to trust them. Then you should know that they should not be in your inner circle. Then you should know not to share your good news. You should know that they are not going to celebrate you. You should know these things. Because there's no doubt in you. You have all the keys inside of you. You have all the answers inside of you. You don't need no external validation to be like, hey, am I tripping? Such and such said this, I said this. They, there's no reason why you're going to an external outside source repeating a conversation to validate whether or not that person's a hater or is that person throwing shade. You know, you know, your spirit will never lie to you. Your spirit will pick up on things faster than your conscious mind will. And it won't be until... Maybe a couple hours, a couple days later, you just sitting there pondering and you just dwelling and brewing on the subject or the conversation. And then it starts clicking for you. Like, dang, why they say that? Why they do that? Dang, why, why they move? When, if you got to start questioning, that ain't the person. That ain't the move. You shouldn't question. What, what God, the people that God have for you, you don't question anything. You know what I'm saying? When when people are removed out of your life, understand God will have better. There's no reason for you to be alone. Trust and believe that. When it is time, God will bring you the right friends, the right, you know, spouse, the right people around you to help you achieve whatever it is that you are trying to achieve in life. God got you like that. When one door closes, another door opens. You are never without. You are never lacking. You are never none of that. You know, only only people with a scarcity mindset. Oh, it's not enough men in the world, so they go take one that's already taken, or they or they start sharing one. Oh, there's not enough women, so this man is okay that his chick is for the streets. <laughs> that's a lack mentality. Because there are men and women out here who are faithful and the spouse that you are looking for, you also have to be that for yourself. You can't be out here looking for loyalty and you're unloyal. You can't be out here looking for honesty and you're dishonest. Make that make sense. You know what I'm saying? You, make it make sense. You have to be honest in order to be with an honest person. You know what I'm saying? What you're looking for, you have to be. Whether that be a friendship, a relative, whatever relationship that is to you, you got to be that to yourself first. You got to be your own lover, your own friend, you know, because that's the only way you're really going to attract. We don't chase, we attract because God is always going to give you what you want. It's just a matter of, are you doing the work? If you're not doing the work, but you're just praying and you're sitting on the, on the couch not doing nothing, 
you're not going to get that blessing. But if you prayed for it and you were every day taking baby steps towards that, it's, it's going to pay off. It's going to pay off. I promise you. So you got to learn to know when to cut people off. And let me tell you, pay attention that when you let people go, when you allow them to walk out your life, when you are okay, just you and God, you know what I'm saying? When you are okay letting people just walk away and go or whatever, trust me when I tell you, your blessings is going to come in because some people block your blessings. And when they leave and you start getting blessed, you got more money. You got that new car, that new house. You just, you, you, you suddenly getting mysterious checks in the mail left and right. Y'all, I'm telling you, miracles are going to start happening. That means that person was a demon. I'm convinced that they were a demon because only demons come and come around and try to infiltrate your life to stop you, delay you, slow you. They can never stop you. They can only slow you down and delay you. They can only, you know, get in your way, but they can never stop you. Never, never. So when people are moved out the way and next thing you know, everything is just smooth sailing. That tells you everything you need to know about that individual. That they had a spirit that was monitoring you, following you, lurking on you. You know, they probably was praying, you know, bad prayers against you. Like, I don't like people praying for me. I don't want nobody praying for me because I don't know what type of energy you coming from. You got hate in your heart, envy, jealousy, resentment, bitterness. You essentially, to me in my eyes have an evil heart because why are you harboring those type of low vibrational down emotions for it? and you got the nerve to be trying to pray for me pray for your damn self your prayers don't even work for you sir ma'am so if your prayers ain't working for you why would i think your prayers gonna work for me i don't like that well i'm gonna pray for you anyway god i block and rebuke all of their prayers because I don't know where their prayers is coming from, the type of heart it's coming from, kind of mind it's coming from. They could be praying for your death behind closed doors. Come on now. <laughs> no, warm, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. So I block and rebuke them, them prayers. It sounds nice. Thanks. No thanks. I'm good. I know how to pray for myself. I know how to get what I want. I know how to, you know, because I got that connection. I told y'all there's a lot of manipulators out here and they love using God's name. God is good. God told me. The Lord told me. Now, why would God communicate with somebody else and not you? God will communicate with you directly. God, now, don't get me wrong. God sends messages through people. Yes. But let's say you're going through something and then a complete and total stranger appears. Right. And they say some words to encourage you, some words that you just needed to hear. That's how you know that that's from God. But when a person just says, well, God told me to tell you mm -mm. in my experience, when God has sent people to share something with me. They never started with God told me to tell you. No, 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 no. We just, we just, the, the, the conversation just flowed naturally. I wasn't resistant or repelled. I was very open and accepting of this person's energy, their invitation to talk. You know what I'm saying? And as we talked, they said, whatever it was I needed to hear, I needed for encouragement, I needed for whatever. But the people who always got to say, well, God said, or God told me, their God is Satan, I promise you. Your sis ain't going to ever lie to you because I've lived it. Every single person that has said, well, God told me to tell you, they've been on bullshit. Because God wouldn't even send somebody to say, God, think about it. How many times, if you've ever read the Bible, 
When has God sent an angel to somebody and the angel has said, hi, I am the archangel Michael, Uriel, you know, or any of them other angels names. The angels never reveal who they are or who they were sent from. They're just there to protect. They are just there to guide. They are just there to speak whatever message needs to be spoken. They don't tell you who they are or where it came from. But they but they know that what they had to say was needed. Okay? That's for those of y'all who might be a little confused or don't know the difference. You let me know how that works out for you. Because I'm not going to sit here and... And be played by somebody just because they say God. Think about it. How much evil has been hidden behind the church? A lot. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> A lot. A lot. You know, it's funny how one of the commandments is thou shalt not kill. But didn't Constantine and his whole army, we're killing in the name of Jesus. We're click. We're we're killing in the name of Christianity and Christ. That doesn't sound very godly to me. Mm -mm. No, they just wanted to murder. And then they tried to say it was for the Lord. Yeah, their Lord Satan. Satan likes sacrifices. Bloodshed. <laughs> you know? And y'all better be careful because there are some people out here trying to sacrifice you behind closed doors. But little do they know is they sacrificing themselves. Them spirits that they call themselves conjuring up with their little black magic and their little witchcrafts and spells and stupid shit. It can't harm you. All it's going to do is just be returned to them. And once it's returned to them, it's going to hit them like a rhino i mean it's gonna be so heavy they're gonna wish they never played with you because i'm witnessing it i'm witnessing it with certain individuals and you know what i have no mercy for them because they didn't have no mercy for me when they was praying that evil shit upon me they had no mercy no grace no heart no empathy not a care in the world so don't you dare shed a tear or cry when they in the hot seat, when they going through. Mm -mm. Let them suffer. Let them suffer because they planned on letting you suffer. They planned on taking pleasure in your suffering. So learn to let people walk away. And when they gone, let them go. Don't give second chances. Shoot, you better ask God, like, hey, what is this person's, you know, intentions? Why are they trying to spin the block? Why are they trying to come back? God will review, re, uh, reveal to you what their intentions are. Because, see, you could tell a person that don't believe in God because they real stupid. They really think you just dumb and you just going to accept their little fake apology and allow them back in your life. They going to just slither their way back in your I cut my grass. So can't no snakes be in my grass and be undetected. Okay. Y'all better get out there and trim your hedges and cut your grass. <laughs> All right. Anyways, y'all, I wasn't even trying to be on here this long. But peace, positive energy always creates elevation. Y'all stay safe. Learn to let people go. It's okay. Trust me. God got better.